Today I'm joined with Himal Pillay, who's a speaker, facilitator and YouTuber on mental health, lifestyle and personal development. Himal, thank you so much for joining. Oh, it's all good. Thank you for having me. So I actually went to school with you and have actually been following you, I guess, your journey on YouTube and seeing that kind of come together from an idea I remember um, in year 12, you were saying you wanted to be a speaker and to see that come to fruition now, it's absolutely incredible to see what you're doing. Yeah, um, it's like it's I think it's it's pretty wild because I feel like I I never thought I would like I, th I thought I would be I just didn't know how I was going to get there um but I just feel like it was just something that was always at the back of my mind because I feel like a lot of my friends like even like your sister like Lauren like a lot of them were um extremely good in like a lot of things mm. um in high school and I just felt like I just didn't have my thing like mm. the thing that I was good at and it was only until like a couple of years later when I finally found out that like public speaking was just something that not, not didn't initially come naturally to me at first, but it was just something that took a lot of time to develop. But that was just something that I ended up being, I think personally, um, extremely good at. Mm. And it was just unfortunate the way that the education system was run at the time or still is actually, um, like it's not something you really get assessed on. Like you might get an English oral presentation um, and then you get assessed on that. But then it's like, it's really interesting how like, it's such a valuable skill to have, mm. but it's not assessed fully. And so I was good at many subjects. It was just, this was just one thing that I felt like I was great at. Like one of my other best friends, like Henry, he was great at maths. You know, like Nathan was great at English. Lauren was mm. good at everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like... So they had their, their, their things and I felt like public speaking eventually ended up being my thing. Mm. So. Isn't that interesting though? Because I feel like you can't even necessarily find that passion. If you're talking about, say, an English book or yeah. a topic that you've been given and have to speak about, yeah. it's very different because I found, yeah, I get quite nervous with speaking at school and I definitely wasn't interested in what I was talking about. And now yeah. that I've found something I'm passionate about, I feel like I can't shut up. Like I feel it's just, yeah. I have so much excitement about speaking and and spreading the word that I never realized in school because it wasn't what I was kind of passionate about. And I think mm. it's interesting as well. Um, yeah, like what you were saying is that you don't necessarily know what you're good at until you find it. But even at school, it's quite limited with what you can um, explore. Yeah, 100%. And I feel like, well, I think everyone has this challenge where, because we're like when you're in high school, you're so young. Mm -hmm. And so then to be asked, oh, what are you really passionate about? It's just a question that, one, if you ask yourself, sometimes you do have an answer, but more often than not, I feel like many people don't because it's like, well, you haven't tried everything yet. And then if you put the past two years together as well, like with the lockdowns and whatnot, like where was the opportunity for people to actually go out and explore and find out what it was that they were interested in? And like, unless they were doing it online. And so like, it's hard to kind of figure it out. I'm just like really lucky. Like I'm actually extremely grateful for the fact that like I saw it and I felt really connected with it. I just happened to be one of the lucky ones, I suppose, when I'm uh, one of the blessed ones, I suppose, when I just found that, you know, speaking was something that I just felt really connected to. Mm -hmm. And it's a struggle for young people, you mm -hmm. know, because it's, and like, I feel like, like the cliche is, you know, you find out what you're really passionate about. You find it, you chase it, you know, you do what you love and love what you do. And as much as I used to agree with that, like fully, I just feel like, you know, you can find enjoyment and you can love almost anything. Um, even sometimes, even sometimes things that you don't like doing. Mm. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's so true. And that's why I've kind of got that, um, explore your core as a community. Cause I find, yeah, some people are really happy with nine to five mm. work or like a work that's pretty much straight from school. They do those subjects, they go to uni and that's so sweet. And that's awesome. Yeah. Like if that's the rhythm they've found, then that's awesome. But mm. there's a lot of people that have a passion in an area that you don't know necessarily where it's going. Like say yeah. for me in art, I, I don't know where it's going. I don't have anyone telling me, oh, do this and then this and this is the next project. Like it's all completely up to me it's amazing because it's unlimited yeah. whatever i choose to do i can do yeah, if yeah. i want to do murals i can do that if i want to run and do say stickers and t-shirts yeah, i can do anything i want which is really yeah. exciting but it's also it's scary i'm yeah. thinking that that are vulnerable so if you're speaking you're doing things that you don't mm. know how it's going to be received you don't yeah. necessarily know how it's going to go it's all creative work and that's why i want to foster a bit of a community to help people 
have the support of following what they want to do, especially yeah. if it's a bit more niche or a bit more vulnerable or, or creative. Because I think when you find what it is, like it's something you want to run with, but it's still scary nonetheless. Yeah, 100%. And I'm like really happy that you're doing this stuff at least. Because I know, like I know a bit of your journey and like it's just nice to, um, like it's, it's nice to see you like grow and then I think just become someone I don't think even your parents expected you to become. Mm. And like it's just, but like it's something that you feel like from what I've seen, um, you've just grown into such a powerful and like like loving and humble woman. And it's just really nice to like, it's really nice to see that and like watch your journey from like mm. where you were to like how you are now and like the struggle that you've been through. Like it's, I think your story is like, it's so inspiring. I think it's important, you know, the, like you're interested in doing valuable work and like bringing, um, bringing meaningful work to other people, which is just like, I think like there's no better way you want to do things, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really proud of you. Oh. Uh, no, I am. Like genuinely, like it's, it, it's nice to, it's nice to see it. And like, it's, it's hard. I feel because this, this, this pathway, this work, um, like whether it be, you know, creative, whether it be art, whether it be like, you know, videoing and whatnot, um, it's not an easy path to follow because it's like, it's so against the norm, although it is changing now and I feel like it's changing a lot now. Yeah. Um, like it's still such a, um, such a brave step to take. Um, so yeah, good on you. 